What's up peeps? My name's Ian, I sell books on eBay and it's been another kind of slow day. It's a slow time of year, we all know that, there's not a lot going out but a couple of interesting sales, some that are a wee bit different to the usual and otherwise a few bundles which is what we would expect. So let's just have a look at what is sold. First we have three Peter May books uh, so $9.99 for the three of them. Just the usual paperback Peter Mays. And then we have another three paperbacks. This time it's Leslie Pierce. So £9.89 for those three because they're like five pence cheaper than the Peter May books. I think these are like... 2 95 instead of £3, so that's the difference. Uh, but yeah, 9 89 for those. And they didn't go out and promoted listings, so that's an extra couple of quid. Right, next we have another bundle. Five this time. Just want to pick them up with one hand. Yay! Susan Lewis this time. So we've got five Susan Lewis paperbacks. Um, she's remaining quite popular. Again, not a promoted sale, so that's good. And for the five paperbacks, that's twelve ninety nine. So an extra two books brings in an extra three quid. Seems simple enough, doesn't it? Right, next we've got a single book, quite a nice one. And it is Robin Hobb, The Dragon Keeper. So I think this is book one of the Rainwild Chronicles and it's a first edition. So that went for £18. So rather nice. Keep your eyes peeled. And a couple more orders to go through. We've got a bundle of kids books. Not Julia Donaldson, not David Williams. Just a kind of mix and match type effort so we've got Time for Bed Spot Harry McClary and Zachary Quack We Board Book another Harry McClary We Board Book but it's just the original Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy a wee Thomas the Tank Engine Super Library set it's just, it was listed as one book obviously then Little Rabbit Foo Foo or Little Rabbit Foo Foo if you want it without the guttural stop on the T's and we're going on a bear hunt we're going to catch a big one we're not scared so aye that was a an interesting wee bundle I've got a listing up for just like, kids picture books and I think I've only ever had a couple of sales out of that listing so maybe that'll get a wee bit of traction and go now I've not added to it in ages because it didn't seem to be going anywhere I've just let it sit but it's it's moving. What did they sell for? Did I tell you that? Eleven ninety five for those five kiddies books. So again, all nice average sales. And then we've got a stack of J.K. Rowling, Robert Wilbraith. So I just picked up a few of these the other day actually. Uh, and that seemed to get the list moving, but you know, a cuckoo's calling. Career of Evil. The Silkworm, Troubled Blood, and a big copy of Lethal White. I did just pick that up a couple of days ago. And the five of those went for £17.49. So, went promoted. It's going to be a bit bigger on the postage, but still works out as the kind of average price I like. So that's the six, is it six sales? Yes, yeah, six sales, 80 quid. So another slow day. That's been three slow days in a row. Um, M, 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 M. So what have we had? One, three, six. No, actually, that was all right. So 74 on Thursday and then £53 in sales total yesterday. Uh, a couple of these orders, which I think half of these orders have come in this morning. So half nine for Galbraith. Quarter past nine for the kiddies books. Half seven for Susan Lewis. Yeah, so yeah, half of those orders have come in this morning. So it's been a an all right start to the day, and I hope that continues. 
So yeah, it's it's been slow. It's certainly not. I mean that's one, two, which four days out of the last seven have been less than a hundred pounds, considerably less than a hundred pounds in sales, which is really not good at all. Um, two of those days came before I changed up all the promo stuff. So like for like since that, we've had one, two, three, four, five days since I changed up the promos. 260, 270, 370, 470, 506, 580, and 53 is so 633 three for the five days since. And before that, we had 64, 66, 156, 256, 299, 399, 403, 409, 600 pounds after. So, hmm, it's, it's, it's not a big difference to be honest. Is it? No, it's not. But we'll just keep plugging away see how it works out I'm definitely going to just go with the kind of full promo prices all the way through to the end of the month and then see where the sales have gone in that so yeah it's slow we're still listing lots and the the comfort the consolation that I have through these slow sale days is I know that there's enough days where the sales are better than that even through this you know February March where it is really really slow um, there's still good sales happening. So as long as I keep getting the stock, once we get to a slightly better time of year, and I mean, last year and through the summer, books did really, really well, which is where I decided to flip on to the books predominantly over everything else. So they do sell. People are looking for their summer reads. It, it, it works. So I'm quite happy moving forward as long as it can keep ticking over just and no more keep paying the bills, keep paying me a wee wage, then this is working fine and it's the potential is still there for it to do an awful lot better. I've still got hundreds of books and bundles to get listed, so I've got a good wee stock at the moment. I always like to keep well ahead of that so that there's stuff there to get up and listed that's already paid for, so that if cash flow does get a bit tight with not a lot of sales coming in, I can still keep new stock getting added in you know I've always got a, a good few days cushion on that piece so a couple of questions and comments around why I sell what I sell aren't there better ways to do it um, and some have said before but I'm going to say it again anyway why not eh I'm here talking so I might as well talk Amazon I've been waiting weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks for the Amazon approval process to go through and I've still not got anything from them so I can't do Amazon until I get that anyway which is a bit frustrating but to be honest if that's how they they run I don't think I'm missing out on much to be honest um, why don't I just stick to specialty books non-fiction books because they, they make better money well they do if you can find them if you go into well, the shops that I typically go into they've got a shelf of non-fiction down the bottom at least half of which will be low-value cookery books and the rest is all fiction. So to go around and pick up enough, you know, dig through all of those. If I went into every shop and found a couple of hardcover books that might make me a tenner in profit each, then I've got to be doing that every day for hours, every day, looking for those books, digging and searching and scanning and all the rest of it. Um, with the fiction books, so yesterday I went in and picked up 245 yeah 245 books may actually have been a few more than that or a few less but 245 I think it was um, it took me from the time I left here going to Royal Mail to drop off my parcels going in picking up all the books and getting back here one hour and seven minutes to pick up 280 books they've you've seen from previous videos each of them will make me about a pound. A few will be a wee bit more. A couple will be a little bit less. But each of those books will make me about a pound in profit. And they sell reasonably quickly for books. Because I, I know what I want to pick up with those fiction ones. But I can rattle through, pick up so much in such a short period of time. 
that that's, you know, two or three days sales that the rate things are at at the moment. And it took me an hour to pick them up. To list them all, I've listed about half yesterday. Um, actually, no, probably about a third yesterday. I spent about an hour listing. It's, it's a no-brainer. So for two hours of effort, I listed just shy of £400 worth of books and I've still got twice as much of that left to go to get listed and stuck on so it'll take me another couple of hours to do that so talking about profitability yes it might be more profitable to go out and find a <coughs> excuse me we fly to do them my throat there a, a non-fiction book that can make me 10 20 pound profit and i can sell it on amazon and sell it on ebay i can sell it whatever but I might only find one and it could take me hours to do it. So profitability, what I'm looking at is how much effort and time does this take me? So lately I've been trying to list more just to see where, you know, how much I need listed stock-wise to kind of hit a, a plateau that's sustainable sales, i.e. £200 worth of sales a day, which is still relatively low. And... That's taken me, I mean, to be to maintain that, we're talking two or three hours a day. I mean, really, that that is it. Two or three hours a day to bring in two hundred pounds worth of sales, which is going to be seventy to eighty pounds in profit. You know, that's once everything's paid for every single day of the week, and that's that's not bad. It's you know, thirty grand a year, so it's not like stupid money but it's a really good base to be building from. So that's the point I want to get to, hopefully in the not too distant future. And then that gives me the opportunity to, once I've got that baseline set at a reasonable level, then I can expand and go from there. A wee bit of a rule that I've always worked on, and I don't know where it's came from, but I've got it in my head, is that your annual income will be about the same as the value of your total stock. So that gives you that kind of two, three percent sell through rate on a daily basis. Um, so as long as you, you can't just go out and buy any old crap and list it and expect to get that. But if you've got the right stuff, and for the most part I do, then that's what it's going to match. So at the moment I've got about maybe £35,000 worth listed. Um, but the way I work the deals, that's probably closer to 20, which is actually where I'm at sales wise. So yeah, 35 grand, but if you buy three, you get two free. So 20,000 pounds worth of stock sitting there. And that is where my turnover is at the moment. That's what I'm making every, you know, on average when you spread it across the piece. So everything's where it should be. If you want to sell more, you need to have more of the right stuff and you need that bigger selection which takes time to build up you know you need to, the logistics not everyone can just go out, grab a big warehouse and fill it up as they go you've got to do it in steps which is, is working out okay for me at the moment um, and non-fiction books that are worth more money if I see them I pick them up I don't not pick them up and I occasionally get a good sale out of them but they're few and far between compared to the readily available fiction. Um, so two or three times a week, go out and spend 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 pounds on books, mostly fiction, and they consistently sell. Some days are definitely better than others, but they do consistently sell. And within all of that fiction, you find, you know, books that you would not expect to be worth a lot of money that are worth a lot of money. I've sold, you know, a good number of books for, you know, well north of 50, 60 pounds, where I've paid, you know, literally pennies for them. Not always picking them up because I know they're valuable, but I pick them up because I like the look of them, and sometimes they are. Uh, Non-fiction books, a handful, I mean literally a handful, that have sold for good money that I've been able to find and source. And I do look through them, and if I see anything that's of interest, I will pick it up. Um, most of the shops in my area stick their little sticker over the barcode at the back so scanning them is not practical they don't like people doing that here around here i don't know what it's like in your area but here 
they really don't like it when you've just got somebody sat up the back of their shop with their phone out scanning, 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 scanning. Uh, they get quite irritated by that because typically, I think, having overheard conversations, the biggest problem with that is the absolute mess people leave behind when they do that. They've got no consideration for the fact that somebody's gone out and, you know, stocked up their DVDs and their video games and their books and all of these things. And then somebody comes in and just like scans it and chucks it, scans it and chucks it, scans it and chucks it, scans it and chucks it. Because they're trying to be efficient with their time. But it's not, they're not liked. It's not a popular thing to do. So I don't even try and do that in the shops. Occasionally, if there's something that's interesting, and usually when the staff are asking about it, so I'll say, oh, I don't recognise this, what's this all about? Blah, 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 blah. I'll look it up with them there and we'll both have a nosy at what it is because it might be something that's worth them putting a price up on in the shop. Uh, but that's a, a handful of times I've bothered doing that. So I'm not going to sit and scan, not through Ziffit, not through eBay, not through anything like that. I'm going to pick up what I know sells and stuff that is similar to what I know sells and I can do that very, very quickly, very, very efficiently and then it's dead easy to list. So banging up the listings, updating my variation listings. That's a really quick, easy process, which makes a reasonable hourly rate. There's scaling opportunities within that as well. Um, and it means I don't have to spend every day out, going around every single shop, every source, every possible location I can find to find a few good books. Let's just go in and get all the bread and butter. Within that, there will be a few good books, but the bread and butter and it just keeps churning out and churning out and churning out. So I lament about slow sales days, but it's it's retail. That happens. You have good days, you have bad days. And there's not an awful lot you can do about that when it's just following trend. I will have worse days than I've had and I will have far better days than I've had. Uh, last month, I had one day with a sales of nearly £400. That was down to one book. You know, one book that absolutely bang that through the roof. I've got a few that I've picked up recently that are all worth very good money, but you need to wait for them to sell. They could all sell in one day and I could have an amazing day. I could sell one a week over the next three, four weeks and that would be good as well. But for the most part, what I'm selling is Wilbur Smith. You know, that's the stuff that sells. I picked up 60 Wilbur Smith books yesterday. So somebody had obviously cleared out a collection. Most of them are that 80s cover. Um, I've not listed any of them yet, but all of those books will take me oh, maybe 10 minutes to get listed. Probably not that long, but maybe about 10 minutes because I've got all of them already uh, or I've got listings there for them already, even though some of them might be out of stock. So it's just going in and updating quantities and they sell fast. They really do sell incredibly fast that type of Wilbur Smith book. I also picked up a stack of about 20 John Grisham. You know I love selling John Grisham. I picked up 15, 16 James Patterson. Patterson? Patterson. Uh, about 20 Michael Connollys. So there was lots there that pick up a collection. You list them so, so quickly. I mean, really ridiculously quickly. And they will sell not quite as fast, but almost as fast. Um, at the same time, I've been picking up sets and bundles. So, you know, here's, here's a wee example. I'll hopefully be getting this one done today. Some Isaac Asimov paperbacks. So, they're two, three quid on their own, but I'll stick that lot up for a tenner, free postage, and somebody will buy them relatively quickly. So, you know, the early years, volumes one and three, not two, Foundation and Empire, The Stars Like Dust. So, vintage Asimov picking those things up again that's it's a couple of minutes to get them listed you know quick dis quick title quick description half a dozen seven or eight photos just to so show condition covers all the rest of it and that's it done and that's going to make me three four pounds profit quite easily so there's lots of easy fiction books to list get your process in place have your systems in place and you can just batter through it it's an absolute doddle from that point of view. It takes a lot of space. That's the one downside. It does take an awful lot of space. But I've got space I can use at the moment and it should be enough now that I've done a wee bit of a workout in the garage to be able to store stuff that's pre-made, pre-wrapped up bundles. Uh, I mean, I've got maybe 
thousand books out there already and there's more to go so I will start running out of space again at some point but I'm just going to keep going until I do and we'll see what happens um, the issue with space is a couple of big pickups this week and a few days of slow sales so not a lot of volume going out but quite a lot of volume coming in and that's where you've got to make sure you've got a kind of cushion on that balance but we'll, we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes but although I am disappointed some days with the sales overall I'm where I think I should be it would just be nice for it to be more and um, we're getting towards that holiday period so you know Easter holidays last year it was just before Easter holidays and going through them where the book sales began to kick in so people are heading off for a week in the sun uh, in spring picking up a few reads there and then you know that's where all your a lot of women's fiction your James Patterson type things begin to move at that point so keep grabbing them keep selling them and just keep seeing what's happening but there's there's no real reason to fret things can be frustrating but when you're getting frustrated by these things when you're thinking oh god it's not happening just widen your view so have a look across the piece go backwards and see what that means going forwards so two days in a row with a lot less than £100 in sales going in if that is how it's going to be forever then that's really annoying and it means you need to go out and find another way to bring in income but it doesn't mean you need to stop what you're doing because if I'm only doing I mean like today so that's 80 quid's worth of orders so 25-30 pounds in profit it's going to take me 20 minutes I'll spend longer doing this video than I will picking, packing, posting those books and if that's all that's going out every day I only need to go and do a pick up once a month that'll keep me stocked up you know, that's that's all I would need to do so for making 25, 30, might actually be a wee bit more than that because the Robin Hobb book there was a lot more profit in it um, doing that every day for half an hour's work that's banging, you cannot complain, so yeah, we'll see what happens with it, anyway I think that's about enough, oh no you know those two books that I got yesterday, the Bling Date with the Book Books that I bought out of the charity shop and opened them up and we had a wee look at them. I read The Pale House Devil. What's it called again? Wait a minute, I need to go and grab it. Yeah. The Pale House Devil by Richard Cadry. So I mean it's like 120 pages. I read half of it uh, just before my dinner and then I read half of it just after my dinner it really was you know an hour and a half to read the whole book of that um it's it was quite good but there's always a but with these things aren't there it I feel like it was missing something the whole way so browsing back at it and it's just a nice wee you know, slightly gothic short story and it really does well it's a novella but it definitely feels like a short story um, it's just 120 pages of dialogue there's very little kind of colour around the, the whole thing does that make sense um, other than mentioning the odd splash of red blood I don't think there's anything particularly descriptive in it which is a bit weird you know it tells you one of the guys is like six foot four another one's a, f a foot shorter but other than that I've there's yes it's just it's, it's not a descriptive story let's say it was quite good I quite enjoyed it I read it all and I battled through it quite quickly but it feels like a, a script it's a a quick script that somebody wants to get turned into like a, a TV movie or a TV pilot or something. Um, I don't know, it reads like there's probably a few books, a few stories he's written with the same characters. Um, but, aye, it, it felt like a script. That's what it was, rather than it being, you know, particularly a story. And it may be a treatment that's put together and then the editors come in and help them pad it into something a little bit more. But yeah, that was good. Don't be wrong. It's, it's worth a read. Um, 
I'll be perfectly honest, I don't think I would go into Amazon and spend a tenner on it. But if you see it in the shop for a pound or two, yeah, pick it up and give it a go. I'll probably list it up at some point soon. Um, maybe the start of the month, because it's a nice little book. It's a lovely condition and it looks nice. It's very pretty, very pretty. I like that cover. Um, but I was expecting it to be like that and it was. So that was no massive disappointment. Um, I've got the other one that we opened up to read. This world does not belong to us and it looks a bit more... Sinestra. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that. And we'll see. It's its cover price is twelve ninety nine, but I think you can pick it up on Amazon for about four or five quid. So that's something a wee bit different. Um, and I'm looking forward to this one. I hope I'm not disappointed and it isn't just some sort of angst-ridden teen thing. So yeah, anyway, that was those two books. The Pale House Devil it was good. But with it being such a short book, it was missing something. It could have been a much longer book and got you an awful lot more invested in the characters uh, as it stood. Really couldn't care less about what happened to any of them as it went along. I was just reading it for the, the wee journey and that wee snippet. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I'm just blethering away for nonsense. The cat started yowling, so he must be stuck in the kitchen and he either wants out or he wants in. What he wants, well, they obviously wants fed. It's a cat. They always want fed. Uh, and we'll leave it there. So, see ya. Love you. Bye.